have our friendly neighborhood officers who actually deal with crime scene investigations. So I'm going to have them come over and say hi. This is Officer Etchison, Officer Simon. Officer Simon, and Cadet Bennett. All right. Good morning, Officer Simon. Uh, I'm an evidence tech with the New Lenox Police Department. Uh, I've also worked as a detective. So not only have I worked with evidence, but I also get to talk to people and try and get confessions. And I also do patrol. So I drive around a squad car, wave, pull people over, all that fun stuff. Uh, I've been a police officer for 13 years. I'm Officer Richardson, I'm also with evidence. And I've been uh, assigned a day shift, so you guys might see me out there. And I've been a police officer for 15 years. Um, <coughs> In the New Lenox Police Department Cadet Program, we kind of help out wherever we're needed. You know, we do training so we kind of learn how to become a police officer. Um, it's a fun time. So, I need you guys to open up your notebooks on the front page. So I have a little thing. So we're going to have mock crime scenes is what these are called. So we're going to pretend that something happened, all right? So mock crime scene number one. On your field trip to a local theater, you make a startling discovery. When the lights dim and the curtain rises, a purplish light from the stage makes you glow in the dark. Do you think you guys are going to glow in the dark with us? Maybe? No? But in a group that you are with, not everyone shines. What's up with that? Does anyone really know what makes someone glow? In this activity, we're going to use a black light to see what kind of materials are fluorescent, which means they glow in the dark. So, if it's glowing and what color it is. And can you guys guess what this is? All right, sit back down so everybody can see. Um, I don't know from you yet. Yeah. 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 Anybody guess? Some purples. Salt. 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 Is that kind of crazy that salt goes purple? It's pretty cool. It's a lot different than the sugar. Alright, and then when you're all done, you can see your thumb. Okay, Casey. This glow is what is it? Huh? I can see it. I can see. I can see. Mm -hmm. salt. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. You think it's salt? Didn't we already do salt though? You yeah. think I'm messing with you and I'm putting salt in two different ones? Yes. You did. But don't you think it's kind of funny that it kind of looks like, what does it look like? Okay, sure. Alright, so white glow. No? I don't know any white. It's something you use to decorate pictures for your moms and dads. Glitter. Very good. So isn't that kind of cool? It looks all sparkly. Sparkly like glitter. Does anybody have any glitter on their shirt? No. No? I got some animal glitter. Well, I wouldn't expect you to have glitter on your shirt. Not the glitter. Officers, do you ever really use black lights? Do black lights ever use any different colored lights? Occasionally, if we're looking for um, fingerprints, we want to use some black like leaves, or we could use them for blood, for the blood, things like that. Certain chemicals uh, shows up really, really well under the light. I was told that wool light is a fun thing for kids to. Which one? Probably shouldn't see what they should do with wool light. Wool light apparently glows very well under black light. Yes. All right. Well, we even have some fingerprint powders that work with it, so oh, great. it makes it a little bit easier for us, especially in circumstances where we don't have a lot of light to right. work with. So something like this would be, hopefully nothing on the walls here. Does it always have to be white? It has to be a very light color. It could have no color, actually. It could be clear, but certain elements of whatever we're looking for, certain so chemicals, oh. would show up under this light much better than Most a wood or flashlight. What's that? That's why we use them. And so put on their crime scene two. All right. So don't write anything down after the crime scene two. Then I just need you to put your notebooks down.
Okay, if you don't know how to spell it, it's not the end of the world. It's all good. Okay. Just write a number two. It's all good. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys look at this. Don't write anything down. Don't write any objects down on here yet. I'm going to have everybody look at this. Walk around. Not just say sitting. I'm going to walk around. So look at all the different objects on here. Okay. All right. You go ahead and sit down. I'm going to walk through. I there's 20 different things on here, okay? So don't write anything down yet. everybody on their page two. Well, now I need you to write down as many things from there that you remember. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> to pay attention to, like if they saw robbery or somebody, you know, at McDonald's or something, like, all right, okay guys, listen up. Okay, remembering stuff is obviously very important because we're not there when things usually happen. We're probably close by, but we're not there to see it ourselves. So the first thing we're going to do after we make sure that everybody's okay is we're going to start talking to people and anybody who was there, a witness, which would be you if you saw something happen. So we, you know, officer the person, we pull you aside, away from everybody else, so that you aren't, you aren't all saying, oh yeah, well I saw this, well I saw that. We have to make sure everybody's away from each other. And then the officer would say simply, you know, what did you see? Go ahead and tell me. And using her example, say there was someone who held up the McDonald's. Uh, we, first thing we'd ask you is, what, where were you sitting or where did you see all this happen from? It's really important because we'd be able to tell what you could see. If it, if it happened in this room, you could see what happened in that corner, you could see what happened over there, but you might not see if it happened in the kitchen or the chair storage room because those doors are shut. If it happened in another part of the library, we know you wouldn't be able to see it. So once we know what it's possible for you to have seen, then as you tell us, we might be able to ask you certain questions that might help you remember better, which is you know what we want to do to make sure we get good information out to the other officers to find our bad person. So we might say, what were they wearing? Very important. Um, hairstyle, you know, reddish blonde hair like me, were they tall like me, were they maybe not so tall, um, were they regular size, maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller, did they have anything in their hand, if it was a guy,